And welcome to this tutorial. Um, <coughs> let's make sure we're recording, and we are great. This tutorial is about creating um, what we've done in class. Um, if in case you're working on a new project, uh, in order to have a open world, you may want to go to File, New Level, click on Default, and um, click on the box here, and then uh, you may want to put the scale for to uh, ten and 10 on X and Y in order to make it uh, you know bigger so you have more playing place to to, uh, to play around with what we did in class was we created a laser and we created all the logics for it and um, whatever so what I'm gonna do is um, create a uh, redo this so that in case if anybody wants to refer back to this I'm gonna click on the content folder and create a new folder and I will call this vid tutorial my caps lock apparently is on video tutorials um, so that we know where we're putting our files what I'm going to do is first of all um, it would actually make sense if I went in and deleted what we had done previously so that um, we that's the even Tick. That's okay. That we don't want that to run. So don't worry about this. I'm just undoing some of the things that we've done before, so that we can do everything together again. Okay. So going back to that video tutorial folder that I just made, what I'm going to do is first thing is creating the laser itself. So I'm going to call this a blueprint actor. I'm going to call it um, laser, and I'm going to call this laser underscore two. Whatever I'm going to write underscore two because I already have a um, in this level I already have a um, blueprint called laser so for, for that reason whatever I put in my video tutorial I'm gonna put that to laser underscore two in case if you don't see this tab over here that's because you need to uh, click on this icon that says uh, show or hide the sources panel so laser two we can open that and what I really like to do is have these as two different uh, tabs within the same window first thing is is to let's go ahead and create a box collision no, that's wrong. Let's go ahead and create a, uh, a sphere first to make. I mean, it's not really wrong. It's about whichever, whichever one you prefer. I'm going to get the scale tool and scale this down this way and down that way in order to make this really tiny. Then I'm going to create a box, collision box. This is going to um, be responsible for the logics that's going to happen for our um, uh, laser. I we'll, um, want to make sure that it, it sort of covers exactly the, the laser pretty much and then what I'm going to add is a projectile movement um, you need to have this selected on the left hand side so you can see the settings for it on the right hand side projectile movement most important thing is put the initial speed to let's say I don't know 5000 I think we use 3000 class but I'll put 5000 here and I do not want gravity to affect this so I'm going to press compile if I was to simulate this now you actually don't see that um, and there we go it's flying off into the into the distance somewhere and uh, that's really good I'm gonna also have a point light in order to make it look a little bit better so I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, let's say we are having a red laser blue let's go blue yeah let's go that sort of blue and the light is going to um, emit that um, color for us that's fine so we have our laser, we're going to come back to this, but what I'm going to do is not create a blueprint, but create a material. I'm going to call this laser mat underscore two. Again, you don't have to name yours underscore two. I'm naming mine underscore two because I already have laser mat, I think. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to hold V on the keyboard and click. And then I'm going to hold uh, nothing. I'll just double click on this and I will go choose a very similar color to the light that I had chosen. Make sure you increase this and see the difference between your old color and your new color here. I'm gonna press OK. That is going to become my base color. Now, in order to make this um, glow, we need to select the main material, come here in the blend mode and change that to additive. And then what we are going to do is hold M and click to create a multiplier. That goes into number one. Into number two, we wanna hold S for sugar. That was M for mother as for sure and change the value of this let's say something like 10 15 20 let's go 20 just to make this more glowy 
and the result of that goes into emissive color. Now we should have a glowing sphere. There we go. Save that. Make sure you click save. Okie doke. Um, let's go back to our laser. Select the sphere and under material, search for whatever you named it. Laser mat. Well, underscore two. See, I already have a laser mat, so that's why I'm naming mine underscore two. And now I have a glowing laser. Excellent. Now we need to be able to shoot the laser. Uh, the blueprint uh, responsible for shooting the laser exists in the third person character's blueprint. So inside third person BP folder, there's a blueprints folder. I can open that and then this says third person character's blueprint. Okay, let's pretend this was not there. Okay. And what I'm going to do is, oh God, this is really slow. Okay, what I'm going to do is um, specify a location where the lasers are going to come out of the character. And for that reason, I'm going to click on Add Component, and then I'm going to go ahead and search for an arrow. When I put an arrow, I can choose where the arrow is going to be. It's best if the arrow sort of sticks out of the character. Um, even there would be fine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a logic inside of the event graph that will determine... Um, how or which which dictate the the, the logic behind this um so when do we want the um uh the bullets the lasers to be sh um so fired out when we press left mouse button and from pressed what we're going to do is say spawn actor from class and from spawn actor from class i am going to search for laser in this case laser underscore two and it is asking for a spawn transform i can go get a reference from my arrow click and drag that from there and then say uh, get world transform and get world transform plugs into that and I can say compile and that should be it so now if I pl play the game and if I press left mouse button you can see that I'm shooting blue lasers excellent but we have a problem the problem is that the lasers never die the, the regardless of how many times I click in fact if I was to play this right now and I was uh, to press F8 to come out of that. If you were to look at here, it says I have 24 actors in my scene. When I click, that number uh, goes back up, goes up, but it never comes down. That means that my lasers are still inside of my game. In fact, if I was to click, 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 to create a lot of those and then pause it, and if it was to fly into my, be a little bit quicker, fly into my world, I can see that my lasers, oop, where are they, just saw them, I should have chosen a different color to be honest, okay there you go, it's really really poor quality but you can at least see something, okay, uh, you can see that the lasers, there you go, are still in the scene, and we don't want that, that will slow down our game, uh, the more we shoot, the more lasers we create and we are never removing them, so back into our lasers blueprint, we are going to go into event graph, we don't need these two, we're going to say from event begin play, wait or delay for let's say two seconds or three seconds or however seconds you want and then destroy actor and because there is no reference in the target it will destroy this actor if you want to destroy some other actor some other blueprint then we could plug that into there but because we want to we want this very blueprint to die off then we say destroy actor now if I compile it and go back here and play it, keep your eyes on the number that we have over here. If I press play, it says 16 actors, I keep pressing 22, 24, 25, 27, uh, and it's not going any higher. Why? Because the actors are killing themselves and it's coming back to 16 and that's exactly what we want. Now what we want is to go back to the video tutorial and we are going to go ahead and create enemies, things that we could possibly blow up. I'm going to right click blueprint class actor and I'm going to call this door enemy. And I'm going to open that and make sure you open it. And I'm going to search for static mesh. And on the right hand side, I'm going to search for door. And that you will see door only if you had initially um, created the project with static content, which is actually the default uh, settings anyway. Okay, let's click on that. And we have a static mesh, which is a door. Let's go ahead and choose box and that gives us a collision box let's um, have that in the center here and scale it so that it pretty much matches the um, door perfectly 
I'm not being super careful here though. So space changes your move uh, your keys from move rotate scale. So it switches between them ones for as long as you're not holding the right one. Compile. Excellent. So now we have a blueprint, an enemy that we could um, we could um, uh, uh, use. Now, in order to blow this guy up, there are two ways of creating the logic for it. We could create the logic inside the laser itself, or we could create it inside the inside the um, uh, the blueprint of the enemy. Let's do it both ways. I'll show you how that works. First, first I'm gonna do uh, laser underscore two. So I'm gonna create the logic inside my laser's blueprint, and I'm going to say nothing. I'm gonna get the box, and I'm gonna say a component begin overlap. Cast to door enemy. Check if it's a door enemy. And if it is a door enemy, then drag from the blue pin of door enemy and say destroy, destroy actor. Compile. Let's go ahead and put a enemy inside of our scene. I'm not sure where my starting point is. My starting point is over there. So let's put the enemies um, sort of close to that as well. Let's, let's see if we can alt and drag to create multiple copies. Okie doke. Right, so now, if I go and stand in front of this door and shoot it, I'm destroying it. Okay, excellent. So this was one way of doing it. Inside of the Blazor's Blueprint, we said, am I still recording? Yeah. Uh, we said, check, cast your door enemy, see if it's a door enemy, and if it is, then destroy it. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to cancel all of this. Go to the and compile it. Go to the door enemy into the event graph of the, of the uh, door enemy. We're going to create another logic here to do the exact same thing. So whichever one you do is completely up to you. I'm going to get the box again on component begin overlap. This time we don't want to cast to the door because we're already in the door uh, blueprint already. So cast to laser underscore two in my case, and then if it is the laser, then destroy. Actor. Notice how in this one I'm not dragging the blue pin because if I was to drag the blue pin, it would destroy the bullet. In fact, I might want to do both. I may want to say destroy actor, meaning destroy the bullet as well as yourself. So destroy the bullet as well as the door. This way, this one is responsible for the laser and this one is responsible for this actor, which is, of course, the door. So if I was to press compile, and play again, I should get similar effects. There we go. Uh, so both ways is right. I prefer to create mine inside the laser uh, blueprints, but that's fine and it's not a problem. Um, what we are going to do now, let's delete this from the door um, thing. Let's repeat what we did for the laser. So back into the laser's blueprints. I'm going to get the box and I'm going to say on component begin overlap cast to door enemy and if it is a door enemy then destroy actor. Okay. Now, so this is the very first method that we chose. So let's let's just show you that it's working again roughly. So look. There we go. Excellent. So, what we want to do is also provide a explosion for that as well. So what we are going to do is drink a bit of tea first. Before we dest destroy the actor, we want to spawn uh, an emitter for the explosion, but it needs to come before we destroy the actor. I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, so there's a reason we're putting it before and not after. So I'm going to say spawn emitter at location. And that location is going to be the location of the door. So I'm going to drag from the uh, uh, the as door reference, and then I'm going to say get actor location. And when you get the actual location, play the uh, play the explosion there, and then destroy it. If I put this after that, um, I should probably come. I mean, I have never tried it. It just makes sense to put it before. Uh, but if you do put it after it, there's a chance that it will destroy the actor before it can read where the location of it is and hence your explosion will probably happen at 000, zero and not wherever the actor's location is. And it's asking you for the template. We are going to go ahead and say explosion, compile and play. So now every time I shoot something, the door, not only kills it, 
Am I really missing so bad? Okay, and then it blows up. Um, as you can see, every time that we play them, we blow this up. The explosion is at the bottom right corner of the door. The reason for that is because if I go to the door and into the viewport, you can see that the door's um, pivot point is at the bottom corner of the door. So I could either place the door and the box, both of them, of course, somewhere around here like this so that the explosion happens in the middle of the door. But then again, that would mean that inside of my game, all my doors will go inside the floor. So that's not very good. Let's undo that. Um, or we could, for example, go to laser and we could alter the location. We could say wherever the location is, we could actually break this, split structure pin and split structure pin here. I could say X remains X, Y remains Y. And Z, which is responsible for going up and down, we could say add 100 units to uh, 100, I guess. I'm not sure how high that will go. Let's have a look. Compile and play. Now we are altering its. Um, there you go. So that's better. So now it's the explosion is happening halfway through the door and not at the bottom of the door. And there you go. Now I did do something in class. I will also uh, do that in the video tutorial. So it sort of makes sense to those people who would like to experiment with it. The problem is if I look up, I cannot look up. I'm only and only shooting at wherever the arrow the red arrow inside the character's blueprint is pointed at. In fact, what I will do just to make this a little bit more clear is go get the arrow inside the actor's blueprint and then make this uh, hidden in game to false. So it's not hidden in game, so we can see the arrow. So that red arrow, wherever that red arrow is, that's where we are shooting from. And that's a problem because if I wanted to shoot up, I can't because the red arrow is facing that way. So let's make that hidden in game again. The way I like to fix this is just by not having an arrow. What I like to do is, we are always looking at wherever the camera is. The camera is attached to the camera boom. So what I, first of all, what I like to do is make sure that the camera is not um, rotating around the character's uh, center. I want to bring it up and have it over the character's shoulder, like that. Okay. And then what I like to do is um, go to Event Graph, and for the a transformation of this, I'm going to split it so that we can have access to different uh, locations and, and, and rotations, etc. I'm going to get the camera, reference of the camera, and I'm going to go ahead and get whichever direction the camera is uh, looking. So I'm going to go ahead and say get forward vector, so wherever the forward of the camera is. Now, forward vector, because it's a vector, it comes with two pieces of information. It comes with direction and value. We don't want the value. We just want the direction. We just want to see which way it's facing. And for that reason, we are going to normalize this. Once we normalize it, we only get the direction. Uh, well, with sort of zero value, so to speak, roughly. Um, and once we normalize it, we're going to go ahead and say times float, let's say around 500 for testing purposes and then get actor no get location uh, it really helps if you know how to spell get word location and we're getting the word location of the camera we're getting which way the camera is um, focusing and we're normalizing it and we are timesing it by 500 and we are going to add this float as uh, a vector plus vector and add it to wherever the camera's current position is and have that as our spawn transformation. But it also needs a rotation. So we could go ahead and say get rotation, get board rotation, and that goes into the rotation tab. If I was to compile and play this now, whichever direction I look at, that's where I am shooting my uh, my arrows. In fact, um, What? No, don't worry. Do that for confuse you. Don't worry. So now, wherever I look at, that's where I am shooting at. I could shoot up if I wanted to. I could shoot down if I wanted to. No, you're not seeing that too well. I think 500 is too much. Let's go ahead and put 300, and see what we get. Um, yes, that's that seems more reasonable. So there we go. Now we can shoot in any direction that we want, and that's how you do it. Um, what I'm going to do very quickly, and this, now this part is something that we have not covered inside of our um, class, is that I'm going to create a HUD 
which where I'm going to go ahead and put like a little X wherever the middle of the screen is so that the characters, um, so the players can know where they're shooting at. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is create a HUD system. HUD, HUD stands for heads up display. What I want to do is go ahead and find my user interface and then create a widget blueprint. And I'm going to call this uh, HUD underscore two, since we're naming everything underscore two, hot underscore two. When we open this thing, what I'm going to do is first thing, I'm going to go ahead and get a text bar, put it in here. And the text is going to say nothing but X for this case. Okay. And what I want to do is change the anchor point of that to center that one. So the anchor point of that is in the center of the world. Now I know where the center is. And what I'm going to do is drag and bring that over here until the X is roughly inside the anchor point roughly rough that looks fine I mean I could go and change the values uh, more precisely but who cares and that's it uh, so now we have a HUD but the only problem is that we have and let's also make it red I don't know why I'm making it red considering that my um, that's not red give me red That's roughly red. Okay. And um, yeah, I don't know why I want red. My lasers are blue, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to compile this. Now, the next stage is to add it to our character. If I was to play this right now, I don't see the red X. So, what I need to do is to go back to my character's blueprint, which is this one. Again, you can check into your viewport. What I'm going to do is say, as soon as the game begins, which means event, oops, events begin play. I already have, oop, you can ignore this. And redo that event begin play um, I'm gonna go ahead and say create widget and it comes up and it says with, with which one I'm gonna say hot underscore two and then I'm gonna drag from this and say add it to the viewport so not only create it but also add it if I press compile and play I have a red X and actually pay attention to where the red X is as soon as I press play it's over the right uh, the uh, over the character's right shoulder. Does that sound familiar? Remember when we placed the camera boom over the right shoulder of the character, and that's where the red X is because it's at the center of our screen, etc. So that it's gonna make sense. So there we go. So now, when I look at these, I can shoot them. Don't know why it's taking a uh, sort of taking its time to recognize them, but it's there we go. It's working. And that is how you go ahead and create a laser, a material for the laser, an enemy, blow up the enemy, and even have a HUD system where you can look around and see what you're sh shooting at. This tutorial was about 23 minutes long. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in class, probably. Thanks for watching.